tea's gone cold. Hi, I'm Dave and welcome to day 12 of RPG A Day 2015. Favourite RPG illustration? Yeah, illustration, not illustrator. Although, if you want to talk about your favourite illustrator, that this is a great opportunity to. Um, talking of illustrators rather than illustrations, we have uh, a guest videographer um, and uh, I'm happy to announce that it's John Hodgson, who uh, is a great illustrator who works mostly for Cubicle 7 at the moment. In fact, I think he's now one of the CEOs or something like that of Cubicle 7. He's recently been promoted. Hey, boss. Here to talk about his favourite RPG illustration. Hi, my name is John Hodgson, and I'm the creative director at Cubicle 7 Entertainment Limited. And we publish uh, the Doctor Who role playing game. We publish uh, the Lone Wolf adventure game. We are about to put out the London box set for Cthulhu Britannica. And we publish the One Ring role playing game. A whole big ton of stuff we published. So uh, I was very honoured to be asked to take part in RPG A Day by Dave. I think it's a really exciting thing to watch and to be a part of. Um, and I picked as uh, art direction and creating illustrations is a big part of my job. Um, I picked the best RPG illustration day to talk about. Now, I'm going to totally cheat on this one just to warn you ahead of time. I'm not going to pick one illustration because it's just too difficult. Um, I'm going to do maybe four or five kind of categories, but I've got to talk really quickly because I've not got much time if I'm going to do five. So the first one, which is the closest I can get to my personal favourite RPG illustration, is this cover to Dragon Magazine by Daniel R. Horn. Now, like a lot of things in role-playing games, this has a big nostalgia factor for me. I bought this Dragon Magazine off the uh, newsagent shelves when it came out. Um, I think it's a really exciting image. I think there's a lot to recommend it. Um, it's got a really good narrative. We're at a really exciting moment in the story. We don't know which way it's going to go. That, for me, sums up a lot about role-playing games. That You can tell they're rolling the dice at this point. And we don't know, is he going to hit her? Is she going to draw that arrow before he can? You know, sort of magic arrow thing going on. That's really exciting. I think she's a really um, characterful, properly dressed female protagonist who just looks like an adventurer. Um, and if you remember when this came out in, I think it must have been uh, late 80s, early 90s, for me, as someone that was always a bit uncomfortable about all the kind of cheesecakey art on the cover of, of the likes of Dragon Magazine, it never sat that happy with me. I, I didn't understand what that had to do with adventure games. Um, obviously, there's a, there's a rich vein of, of uh, sexy, for want of a better word, because um, I don't really find it that sexy, but um, sexy art in role-playing games and fantasy art in general, but it's just never really been my thing. That's not what I come to fantasy art for. Um, but anyway, be that as it may, I thought this is just a really beautiful piece of illustration. I love the colour palette, I love the composition, I love the narrative, and I love that she's a strong female protagonist. Okay, great piece of work. Uh, next up, I wanted to talk about my favourite RPG illustrator. So rather than a single piece of work, uh, a body of work, um, and my very bestest RPG illustrator is Angus McBride, who is known perhaps more for his work for the likes of Osprey Publishing, military illustration, that kind of thing. But he worked on everything as an illustrator, and he's been a big inspiration to me because he turned his hand to so many different things. And I've, I've done a lot in, in my career as an illustrator, art director, and now creative director. Um, incredibly incredibly prolific, um, uh, a master with the gouache that he worked with. I mean, incredible stuff. I've got some originals of his work. And he's one of those artists where there's nothing to be learned by looking at the originals in comparison to looking at the printed work. They're the same size. He worked one-to-one. -one, so the originals I have of his are tiny. Um, but I picked up, picked out just this one illustration of his that, that's uh, a painting from uh, Merp, the Middle-Earth role-playing game. Um, and it's uh, the Woses cover to the, the Woses book that they put out. And there's, there's a, a whole number of Middle-earth illustrations I could have picked out of his. I love so many of them. Um, but this one, I just purely, almost whimsically on my part, I love the colour, I love the way it's painted, I love the content. Um, I just think it's a beautiful P 
piece of work. I could have close second place was the the cover he did of Galadriel. Um, I think that's really good. Maybe I'll sneak that into the video as well. Uh, right, so moving on quickly because I'm running out of time. Uh, I wanted to pick my favourite illustration that I've commissioned as art director at Cubicle 7, my favourite illustration we've published. And uh, without too much hand wringing, um, it's hard to have favourites. I have a really brilliant team of artists that we work with. I love all their work, otherwise they wouldn't be working with us. Um, but the illust one illustration I picked that's my favourite is uh, an illustration of a performance of Peter Pan from Shadows Over Scotland. Um, which is a super award-winning book we put out a couple of years ago. And I just think this is a lovely little illustration. I think there's so much to recommend it. I think Rich, it's by Rich Longmore. Um, I think Rich does great things with economy of line. It looks like a pen and ink drawing. It's actually digitally created. Um, but it, yeah, it looks like pen and ink. I think it's lovely. Great stuff. Good job, Rich. Uh, moving on, I thought I would quickly fit in my own my own favourite piece of artwork that I've created for role-playing games and this is the cover to uh, The Darkening of Mirkwood for the One Ring role-playing game. Um, I realise it's a bit egotistical and self-centred and vanity-driven to include some of my own work but um, yeah I just think it's one of my more successful paintings. I like the situation that's going on. Uh, it's always quite hard to handle kind of nighttime scenes and I think this, this one works. Um, and we've got Radagast here, he's uh, he's gone deep into Mirkwood to meet with some of these uh, spider characters that are in in the campaign, The Darkening of Mirkwood. And it's all pretty scary stuff if you've ever played that. Okay, cool. So that's it. So my one favourite was the Daniel R. Horn piece, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I've flung in there to cheat. Um, thanks very much today for including me in RPG A Day. I hope you're all enjoying your month of talking about RPGs. And, uh, yeah, well, how does it go, Dave? Stay multi-classy. Thanks, John. Um, okay. My favourite RPG illustration. It's tricky because there's a lot of really good illustrations in books, and a lot of the time it's the covers of RPGs that really sell the product to you that make you want to buy them. This was certainly the case when I was a very impressionable preteen up in Yorkshire and just getting into RPGs for the first time um, while I played Traveller and D&D &D, uh, I really wanted to actually be running a game of my own and f popping into the I say local local game shop which was a bit of a strange location it was a um, picture framers in the middle of Hull who um, secretly had a strange door that went up to a, a floor above the picture framers where they had uh, RPGs. Not what you really expect from a game shop, but it's like, oh, so, um, does anybody know where I can buy some role-playing games? Uh, yes, there's a secret door in the back of, of this art gallery. Oh, how very strange. Um, and then you went up at this strange flight of stairs and up there was uh, a little counter with a till and loads of RPG books and stuff like that laid out. And one game leapt out from all the others and that was purely because of the cover and that was Star Frontiers. I mean, look at the cover. It is gorgeous. Ah, oh, but it was everything I wanted from a game a science fiction game at the time because I was really into Star Wars and science fiction in general it's like Star Wars was like a be all and end all of human existence to me at that time and then along came this game and it had this cover and it had the cool guy with the and the, with guns and it had the cool girl with the awesome hair and it was like well, preteen it was like oh wow she's really pretty and there was this da 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 a monkey dode with the wings and they had guns and there was a crashed spaceship and everything like that and it was just like oh this is what i want oh, it's so good and yeah that cover was everything I, that that sold it to me it was perfect and it still sticks in my head today it's one of those weird things where if you think uh, RPG illustrations, one of the first things that leaps into my mind because it was such a formative image in my gaming history uh, is the front cover of Star Frontiers.
beautiful bit of work. So what illustration is your favourite from all the RPGs that you own? Is there is there one in particular that inspires you to create campaigns or whole game sessions just because you've seen this, this one image? Tell us. And uh, don't forget to hashtag it RPG a day 2015. Uh, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, and spread it all over the internet as much as you can. If you want to know what the rest of the questions are for, for the remainder of this month, you can download the image, which is just there, boop, 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 which is rather cool, uh, designed by Will Brooks, that you can download from the text in uh, underneath the video there. Boop, 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 boop. And that's about it for that one. Uh, until tomorrow, stay multi-classy. Mm -hmm.